Hi, I'm Aaron from Living Science Videos. Remember the difference between living and non-living things? Living things or organisms are made of one or more cells, respond to stimuli, maintain homeostasis or a stable internal environment, metabolize energy, grow, reproduce, and evolve. And today we're going to look at the way living things like your cells grow, repair themselves, and reproduce. Unicellular organisms divide to reproduce themselves. The cells of multicellular organisms also divide to develop a fertilized egg, seed, or spore, to grow, to repair the body, uh, replacing damaged cells. And each cell has a life cycle called the cell cycle, of which cell division is only one part. Of course, you're made of cells, uh, so your, cell gro your, your growth in size is related to your body's skin, bone, and muscle cells growing in number by reproducing themselves. In fact, your cells growing in size is part of the reason that they grow in number. Think of it like a city. As cities grow on the inside, the city becomes denser with houses, buildings, and cars. Expanding the border on the outside doesn't really help move things around on the inside. And downtown is the center of the city. Now, at first, this is where most of the life of the city happens, but as the city grows, city centers start to multiply. Look at New York. People can live in different boroughs, like Queens or the Bronx and don't necessarily have to visit the metropolitan downtown center. Similarly, as a cell grows, it becomes more congested. Organelles like centrioles multiply and replicate themselves, and the expanding surface area of the cell membrane, or the cell's border, doesn't expand as quickly as the volume of what's inside the cell. A typical cell is 0.1 millimeter in length, and that's the size of an amoeba, a paramecium, or a spherical human egg. Its ratio of volume to surface area is 6 to 1, and that surface is a phospholipid bilayer, which is necessarily thin in order to function as a semi-permeable membrane. Such a cell can be bigger, but there's only so big it can be before the, its weight exceeds the strength of that super thin membrane to contain it. So a cell can only grow so big before it has to divide into two smaller cells. Think of a densely populated city again. What happens when ships, trucks, and airplanes bring in necessary supplies from the outside? It not only needs more of these supplies, it needs to move them along increasingly congested highways from the outside to where they are needed. If people kept living in the center of an expanding city rather than making more city centers outwards, the problem would be much worse. Now think of what a cell needs to survive. Water, oxygen, glucose, and other nutrients, and it also needs to move its waste out of the cell. And the cell membrane would become overloaded, letting nutrients in and waste out as the cell grows. It isn't simply a matter of crowding or density, either. Cells rely on DNA to store information with instructions for cell operations. Just like you can't run a graphics-intensive game on an old computer in gaming systems that don't have the processing power or hard drive space to store them, DNA can't grow with the cell and can't keep up with the needs of the cell if it grows beyond its capacity. When cell growth starts to overwhelm the system, a growing cell divides into two cells called daughter cells, and this process is called cell division. So cells divide in order to multiply. And cell division solves the problem of increasing volume by splitting volume into two identical cells, and this also increases surface area as it is multiplied in the process. Cells also divide when a multicellular organism needs to repair itself. Now, here with a comment on the role of cellular division with repair is my protege, Microra. Have you ever thought about your cells replacing each other? Are you really the you you were when you were born? And will you be the you you'll be in the future? As it turns out, you might not be. Your body may replace most of its cells every seven to 10 years. This is a great system, as instead of waiting for something bad to happen to one of your entire organs, your cells get replaced gradually. Like when you get a cut, your body repairs that cut by its cell division and creating new cells like skin cells to replace the damaged cells. However, this can also lead to mutations like cancer. Speaking of, didn't you know that cancerous cells are actually common in the body? Most cancerous cells are dealt with by the immune system. However, sometimes your immune system doesn't fight it in time or simply isn't strong enough, and that's when cancer strikes. Cancer is essentially a cell that doesn't shut down at what's supposed to be the end of its life and keeps dividing. It reproduces constantly, leading to a buildup of cells constantly and exponentially reproducing. This can lead to tumors, blocking up important blood vessels, or preventing other cells from reproducing. Thankfully, us human beings are very adaptable, and are constantly finding new and better ways to treat cancer. That's because humans are born with about 100 billion brain cells. Most of these do not reproduce themselves, but here's the good news. They have an average lifespan of over 100 years. At some point in our evolution, there may have been a trade-off between multiplying rapidly and stability. Like your PlayStation hard drive to keep your game information stored, Stability is more important than constantly replacing it with a new one. 
and you simply can't replace your stored in game information on a damaged hard drive with a new hard drive. You don't want to wipe out your memories that stored in your old brain cells with new ones either. But be careful, you can also lose those irreplaceable brain cells. Some that you can't prevent, as we lose thousands a day. But some you can lose through activities like smoking, smelling that expo marker, don't do that, or unfortunately vigorous headbanging at a metal concert. Sorry, Arn. What you want to do to preserve these brain cells is find things that you are talented at. Your brain cells will self-destruct if you don't use them. Learn to play an instrument, find a sport you are good at, but try not to get a concussion, or maybe practice creating art. Every single one of you out there has a talent. Mostly brain cells stick around, however, and brain cells are the ones that make you, you. So maybe the answer to my first question is yes, you will, in some philosophical sense, always be you. When cells divide in order for an organism to grow or repair itself, they're actually reproducing themselves. As we explained in an earlier video, living things reproduce in one of two ways, either through sexual or asexual reproduction. And reproduction is like the most important aspect in all living things. If cells didn't have the evolutionary advantages of reproduction, we wouldn't be able to talk about it today. Most unicellular organisms, like bacteria, reproduce asexual, mostly identical clones of themselves, but a few like the bacteria that causes pneumonia, have adapted sexual reproduction to give them survival advantages. Around the world, pneumonia kills about a million people a year. Now let's say that there's a change in the pneumonia bacteria's environment in its human host. A doctor prescribes an antibiotic. Those bacteria that reproduce through one of the sexual reproduction strategies, called recombination, have an advantage over those that reproduce asexually. Through recombination, these bacteria recombine their DNA with that of other bacteria, changing their DNA and speeding up the evolutionary process. The daughter cell is not an identical clone with the same weaknesses to antibiotics. Over time, some of the worst disease-causing microbes can develop an immunity, which is why it's so important for scientists to study and understand the evolution of bacterial reproduction. Understanding how cells reproduce also gives us important information to understand how we, as multicellular animals, evolve, grow, and develop. It gives scientists important clues on how to fight cancer and diseases. And apart from that, studying and understanding cell division is a fascinating window into an invisible, microscopic world that often operates without our notice until something goes wrong. Mm -hmm.